Remember to subscribe. For daily top reddit stories. Ok story time. What's the fastest you've seen a crowd go from excited to horrified? An animal show at bush gardens. The camel started ducking. The entire assembled students from the elementary school where teacher astronaut Krista McAuliffe taught at. Who were broadcast live to the world. As they watched the space shuttle challenge explode seconds after takeoff. Killing all hands on board. Including their teacher. The climax of the last Twilight movie is a fight scene that goes on for 10 minutes. Vampires are ripping each other's heads off. Giant wolves are throwing them around like chew toys. And one by one each of Bella's friends and family die around her. You can actually hear people in the audience react as each named character dies. And none of this happened in the book. Which was criticized for its lack of climax. As each minute goes on. It feels like they improved the film's story to give it a real sense of danger and excitement and payoff to the series. So sheets intense. And right as they hail the big bad evil guy, the camera fades to black, pulls out, and reveals that all of it was a vision. The last 10 minutes didn't happen. It was someone seeing a future that might happen. No one died. Just a bunch of vampires and wolves standing around staring at each other in silence. Then they all walk away, alive and well. The crowd groans. A girl up front shouts are you shitting me? Everyone sits back in their seat. No one cares about what's happening on screen anymore. Some people are laughing because someone hit the undo button on the most exciting 10 minutes of the movie. Never have I seen a theater turn on a film so quickly and so hard. Uh Pink Floyd often would have giant floating pigs released during the concert. You know inflatable balloons. This would happen like halfway through the show. Well people are smoking tons of pot. Drinking. Doing god knows what other drugas. So by the time the pig is released it's basically like god ascending from the heavens. People were losing their sheet at the pig. Well it got caught in one of the wires and caught on fire. You've never seen so many stoners fall to their knees in terror fear sorrow over the death of a giant inflatable pig. There is no god anymore. His bacon got fried. There was a guy performing risky stunt dives in a river for money. He pulled off great stuff and people were clapping and clearly hyped. One of the tricks went really bad and he crashed head first into a rock from a decent height and hilled himself. A friend of mine decided it would be fun to try and see if he could smash a beer glass on his head. Up until then he was just being a enthusiastic drunk and had some positive attention. He then decided the beer glass thing was a good idea and promptly executed it. Had wounds bleed a lot in the first minute. Crowd went from more You're cute to duck he's gonna die. I sobered up in an instant and got a semi clean towel for him to stop the bleeding. Thankfully head wounds also stop bleeding pretty quick in most instances. WWE's Over the Edge 1999. Owen Hart fell 70 feet to his death during the event. And the company inexplicably continued on with the show after he'd been taken to a hospital. I saw this on YouTube somewhere. A bodybuilder was strutting his stuff in front of a crowd. Warming them up and everything at an event. They absolutely love it. Many people had attended just to see him. He was at his peak. Huge muscles and sculpted physique. Absolutely amazing. I don't personally like the bodybuilding look but you've got to respect hard work. The crowd was cheering him and he got so pumped up. So full of energy and emotion that instead of just walking onto the stage he did an impromptu jump flip. He launched himself high into the air and did this impressive flip. The crowd went berserk. But he was a bodybuilder. Not a gymnast. He landed on his neck and died instantly. Crumpling on the spot. It is one of the most horrific. Sudden and unexpected things I've ever seen. Maybe the worst part was not all of the crowd realized immediately. They kept smiling and cheering for their hero for another minute before it sank in that they had just witnessed him die right in front of them and they were clapping for a dead man. Equals 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 equals. Edit. His name was Sifizo Lungelo Thabit. Only 23 years old. From South Africa. He was a junior world champion in his weight category. For those who are asking. A few people in the comments have posted the link. It's here. I very much do not recommend watching. It's tragic and horrible. Obviously not safe for work NSFL for death. 7-8 years ago during a concert there was an earthquake. Not too huge, but enough for some speakers to fall and to scare the sheet out of those attending. 
an American comedian in the Republic of Ireland saying how happy he was to be in the United Kingdom. Monday Night Football, November 18th, 1985, Washington Redskins vs. The New York Giants. I was pretty young at the time so being allowed to stay up late on a weekday was a rare occasion. During one of the plays, Joe Thiesman was sacked by Lawrence Taylor and Harry Carson of the Giants. The entire stadium went silent as Thiesman would end up suffering a compound fracture of the tibia and fibula. What I remember most vividly is that the broadcast kept replaying it over and over again and seeing Shin snap at a 90 degree angle. It made me physically nauseous and had to walk out of the room. If I recall correctly, following the injury, broadcasting policies were changed so that constant replays like this would not be shown in the future. Edit. Surprised to see how memorable this was for others as well. As a budding Redskins fan at the time, I gained a huge amount of respect for Lawrence Taylor that day. I understand that injuries are a part of all sports. It's a level of risk that many are willing to take. It was the need to keep replaying it over and over again from every imaginable angle that made the impression. Thank you all for sharing your similar experiences. During a Buffalo Sabres game Clint Malarkuk took an ice skate to the neck severing his carotid artery and partially cutting his jugular vein. He almost bled out on the ice. The sight was so horrifying two fans had heart attacks and 11 others fainted. Numerous fans vomited at the sight of all the blood. Malarkuk thought he was going to die on the ice so his only thought was getting off the ice so his mom didn't have to watch him die on TV. He asked for a priest and had the equipment manager call his mom to tell her he loved her. The only reason he didn't die is the Sabres athletic trainer was a combat medic in Vietnam. My parents were at the game and said that most of the fans assumed the worst and that seeing the ice turn red was one of the more horrifying things they'd seen in person. I was at some weird zoo animal preserve north of Phoenix in 2012, and there was a tigress and chain linked compound. This little girl went up to her and blew her a kiss. The tigress looked at her and licked her, her own, not the little girl's, whiskers, and the crowd went aw. The, the tigress shifted a little bit and pissed all over the little girl. The crowd was shocked and horrified, but I laughed my ass off. I don't know if this counts but I'm a huge fan of 90s rock. Corn, Slipknot, Siva, Mushroom Ed, etc. Anyways I've always wanted to see Marilyn Manson in concert and he was opening for I think one of the mentioned bands above a few years back. Anyways, he comes on and just looked horrible. Kind of slurring but whatever I get it. So like 4 songs and he starts singing beautiful people and mostly everyone seemed into it. Well maybe because it's TX and it was an outdoor venue over 100 degrees but he just goes. Duck it. You all suck and walks off stage. Took a few seconds to register with everyone he wasn't joking and every starts booing and cussing. I was legit excited and it just turned to garbage so quick. I was at a Van Halen concert a few years back and David Learoth comes on the mic and says this next one is from our new album. We were all 17 18 on a school trip. Typical week away doing rock climbing, archery, camping etc. At the end of the trip were gathered in a big hall for one final gathering and then out of the blue there was a demonstration on how to effectively heal a chicken. Using a live chicken that was healed in front of us all for some reason. No warning. Several years back and my band opens up for a hardcore punk outfit from Illinois at an all ages venue where they have a sci-fi theme to their show. The singer dresses up as a mad scientist and the other three members dress up as his evil robots. They also have old television sets plugged in around the stage playing 1950s B-horror movies while they play. No one including the people running the venue have ever seen these guys play before but going off of the theme we are expecting something awesome. That is until I'm backstage putting my equipment away and notice them all pounding back shots of tequila. When it's their turn to play they're so hammered they can't even make it through one verse of a song. The singer ended up drop kicking one of the TVS into the crowd of about 200 people. Which caught fire. This caused the sound guy to end their set right there and they were banned from the venue for life. I've never seen a crowd go from happy to a sheet so fast. Diablo Immortal Announcement Last week at a Black Lives Matter protest they were letting anyone come up and speak through a megaphone. 
This man got up and started talking about his newborn son and how he wanted to make sure we have a better world for him. He then started talking about love and unity and the guy essentially had the crowd eating out of the palm of his hand. Then he brought up Bill Cosby and how he was arrested on allegations and the crowd turned instantly. At my friend's wedding, the groom kicked the flower boy. He was no more than 10, so yeah. I, along with an entire beachfront of about 80 plus people, watched a boat back up and chop a lady up into pieces. It was bad. I was at a 4th of July fireworks show in FT Walton Destin, Florida. The show was being staged from the inlet from the Gulf of Mexico to the bay. People were watching it from the other side of the inlet, the Highway 98 bridge and from their boats on the water. The first salvo launched, but one of the shells exploded either in the launch tube or just above and ignited the rest of the show on the ground. Some launched a little bit before exploding. What was supposed to be a 30-40 minute show lasted 1-2 minutes. As the first shells blew up, I could see the silhouette of the technicians as they ran. Like a stop motion movie, the technicians were cool as hell since none of them were looking back at the explosions. I never realized how big the bursts were until I saw them going off on the ground. Everybody was trying to get away. We were being hit by pieces of fireworks. They weren't just landing on everybody. They were hitting us. My dad started the boat, but realized we couldn't move. A lot of kids were watching the show while they floated in the water. We were yelling at the other boats to stop because of the kids in the water. Fortunately, enough people heard listened or realized what the problem now was that they stopped and locked everybody in place. Nobody was seriously hurt or healed only a few techs were treated for minor burns. On that day, those techs outran Usain Bolt, on the beach, wearing safety gear. Detroit Tigers almost perfect game. We all saw the play and the dude was out. We all start celebrating. Then we slowly realize the ump called him safe. Celebration quickly turned to the opposite. Technically not horrified but still the fastest 180 I've seen or been a part of. Ah but Dwyer's press conference that turned into a filmed suicide. I wasn't present. But the Sugarland stage collapse must have been up there. There was a Darren Brown show called Remote Control. It was all about the effects of mob mentality. The crowd had to decide whether something nice happened or something bad happened to the same person. Each time the thing would be better or worse than the last. Eventually it led to them deciding that he would be kidnapped. They were all watching live on hidden cameras in a studio by the way. When the kidnapping was attempted it showed him evading them but running into the road and getting hit by a car. But the whole crowd gasped and eventually people asked the filming to stop. The last part was just an actor stuntman though. Woodstock 99. Everyone was super cool and chill and all of a sudden it felt like the wind shifted. It was palpable. Like you could cut the air it was so heavy. Got a super bad vibe so we packed up immediately and left. By the time we got to the first gas station reports of fire and rioting started. When working on a kids show a child goes missing within the first 15 minutes of the show starting. Show had an emergency stop so the parents could plead for the child to make himself known. Nobody was allowed to leave their seats or leave the building. Whole building had to be searched. Everyone assumed the worst but after half an hour they resumed the show even though the kid still had not been found. But 10 minutes later we got word that the kid had wandered out of the building and was found safe and sound around the corner. To make matters worse the show was Rapunzel. You know where the story centers around a kidnapped child. The station nightclub fire. Small packed club. Great White was playing with unauthorized pyrotechnics. Suddenly caught the building on fire. Emergency exits were locked and people jammed the exit door. 100 died. Thankfully didn't see it in person but there is a YouTube video showing the whole thing. It is a very traumatic watch though so wouldn't really watch it unless you want it imprinted strong enough in your brain so that you will always look for exits when going into a crowded area for the rest of your life. Darren Brown. Remote control. Darren Brown is a TV magician. Illusionist. Sort of like a pen and teller of psychics and this show is on mob mentality. He has an audience pranker man. Chris, who has consented to be messed with for a Darren Brown show at an unknown date. 
There is a studio audience watching and voting on whether he gets a good prank or bad prank with hidden cameras tracking him and Chris's friends and family luring him to certain areas where pranks can happen. The pranks start out silly. Good, he's the lucky customer at a shop. Bad, he's accused of shoplifting. The pranks slowly get more and more extreme and the audience are voting the bad pranks all the time. Laughing as Chris's life is slowly falling apart in one day. It ends with Chris being let out of a police car near his house and the audience have voted for a scary black van to pull up and kidnap Chris. As the van pulls up, Chris runs away and the men chase him down. But when he turns the corner a car comes and knocks Chris down. The studio goes quiet. The lights go on and Darren says nothing letting the audience take in what happened. Giving them nothing. After a while. Darren explains that this was all set up and Chris was in on the whole thing and the audience were the ones being tested explaining how being part of a crowd can make someone lose their morality. They were just cheering a man having his life ruined and being kidnapped fearing for his life. I was at a Russell Peters stand up show in a large theater. He starts some banter with the guy in the first row who had a huge tattoo on his arm saying Skylar or similar name. He asks all about Skylar. It's the guy's daughter. He starts making jokes about daughters, some sexual innuendos etc and then asks how old Skylar is. The guy in the audience goes, she passed away, it was pure crickets after that. I was brought to Corridor once and the matador got his leg impaled by the bull while he was trying to get over a fence. The crowd started screaming and booing the bull like it was a foul move I was like laugh my ass off the dude ducking stabbed it what was it supposed to do? Recite poetry? Challenger launch. Election night 2016. Went to see the Pokemon movie with my fellow group home residents as a treat. There were maybe 70 of us there. Most had never been to a movie theater before so it was a pretty big deal. The house even splurged to get everyone a small soda, candy, and a portion of popcorn. This was literally the best day of most of our lives so far. We get settled in, taking up most of the theater. When the credits started and the lights dimmed, we were so excited, Pokemon, the movie, was about to freaking start, opening ad start, we're silent the whole time in anticipation, then the credits never ended, we thought, because this, one ad seemed to go on forever, some kind of a spoof of an alien movie, maybe a play on Star Trek, credits rolled, lights turned on, nobody spoke, every single face was deflated and so, so freaking disappointed. Someone screwed up and played Galaxy Quest instead of the brand new at the time Pokemon movie. Nobody talked the whole way back to the house. But as soon as we got there so many kids lost it. I didn't end up seeing it until like 10 years later. And it blew mind ha ha. I, I was at a Bo Burnham show he was recording for hit Netflix special but unfortunately this part didn't make the cut. He was cracking jokes as usual then asked everyone in the audience to crack their knuckles on the count of three. It was the most horrifying evil sound any of us had ever heard. Holly Davidson 100th anniversary party. For months they said the headliner of the big weekend long party was a mystery guest. Everyone assumed it would be someone who appeals to the Harley crowd like the Rolling Stones or Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. Right? So the show starts. Opening act is the Doobie Brothers and the crowd loved it. Next is Tim McGraw and the crowd loved it. Next was Kid Rock and he just rocks and the crowd loves it. Then it's time for the mystery guest, it's Elton Ducking John. The crowd just poured out of the park. Plenty stayed and enjoyed the show. But tens of thousands of people said duck this and left. Link to story. Probably the Las Vegas shooting was working as a Baxter Jam manager in a medium sized concert venue. We had quite a famous band with a crazy singer that used weird props. On their rider, a list bands give to venues with their wishes they demanded we arranged two buckets of pig blood. Of course we did not do this. Show was going well. People were having a good time. Until the singer took out a steak knife he stole from our restaurant and started slicing his arms open. He was really making deep cuts and it was horrifying to watch. Blood was everywhere. Most people in the audience were shocked. Some were dry heaving. When the show was over the singer was dripping blood all over the backstage area. Smearing it on the walls. I was fairly young and scheduled to work. Shoot. I got a run for president. Thanks for listening. 
If I spark joy, hit me with a like and subscribe. I make new videos every day. Till then, check out another video or leave a comment. I love you. Have a great day you wonderfully gorgeous person. Asleep.